Well, hello everyone, it's Ren here speaking. Oh, I'm going to bring a Chainsaw Man closer so you, he's part of the picture. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Happy Sunday, guys. Um, today I want to talk to you about uh, the INFJ manner of speaking, maybe the, the, the speed at which an INFJ speaks, potentially also as a giveaway to whether someone is in fact an INFJ. Is the, the, the cadence of speech, is the elocution, the articulation that an INFJ manifests in speech, in conversation, in presentation. Um, can that be a way, among other factors, to determine whether someone is in fact an INFJ? And implicit within this is the idea that possibly being relatively leisurely speakers, I don't want to say slow speakers, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll explain soon enough, um, you know, is that something that characterizes INFJs? You know, I have to admit that this video was also inspired by a comment on my video from yesterday, right, where I talked about the right brain, left brain, and how energies fit in all this, and how other types fit in all this, what is the link between personality type and the concept of left brain and right brain, the creative mind, the more rational, systematic mind. There's a comment that said, Steve, who said that, I think, and he said uh, that he enjoys my videos at 1.5 speed. <laughs> and, uh, and that got me thinking, okay, can actually turn this into a topic for conversation because I think it's relevant. You know, if I identify as an INFJ and there, if there are people who admit that, uh, if there are people who admit that they have to speed up my videos a little bit, what does that reveal, right? Certainly I don't take it personally. I think that's completely fine. Uh, but we can also take advantage of this to wonder if INFJs are leisurely speakers, is this something regrettable? Or is this something that actually we can appreciate because it's deeply woven into their mode of ideation? <clears throat> now, in fact, that's what I believe. But if you want to hear more, stick around. Don't forget that if you're interested in INFJs and you haven't got this book yet, The Ecstatic Soul is the deepest investigation of the INFJ. You can find the links below to ebook and paperback. It's my book on the type. In terms of depth, it might well be superseded by its sequel. The Infinite Soul, which I'm very happy to tell you that I'll soon be able to share, you know, maybe a mock-up of the cover and everything before it actually comes out, uh, so stay tuned. Um, the Infinite Council is a novel that I wrote two years ago, a bit less than two years ago it came out. If you're into Kafka, Dostoevsky, Camus, existentialism, modernism, and the rumor has it the main character is an INFJ, so the exploration of the INFJ personality, maybe the, I, the unhealthy, alienated INFJ in fiction. Get it, there's a link below. And also, if you want to, because all this, all these, you know, all this is also a way to support me and the channel too. Don't, under, don't underestimate to what extent that's really helpful to me. And there's also a link to Patreon there where you can make a donation and, and a monthly donation from, a, you know, small amount, like three or four dollars a month. It really helps. Okay, now going back to the, the INFJ speech, the way that INFJs speak, I said that they are leisurely, I don't want to say they're slow because in a sense, if you if you say that someone speaks slowly, there's often a temptation and it's linked to um, it's linked to the era that we're in, in terms of our intellectual stance, particularly in the West, where we tend to think that a very transparent, fast articulator, someone like, say, for example, Ben Shapiro and Ben Shapiro is an example. Whether he's completely transparent is, uh, is uh, maybe something that you could bracket, but certainly very fast. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of other, um, you know, um, people that I can think of, like, uh, like uh, I think Russell Brand uh, is also someone who's very fast. And automatically we tend to think this person must be very intelligent. So there is a link between how fast you can articulate prima facie intelligible uh, sentences and propositions and, 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 and arguments and the idea that someone's very smart and so if you're more leisurely if you're more slow sounding what does that reveal I think that in the case of INFJs because INFJ ideation is so heavily symbolic and so much linked to the archetype it's it, it has a mode where perception of inner contents comes prior to anything else of course, to get out the insights is always going to take a little bit longer because there's more to work through in a sense. And uh, in a sense, it's almost as if I've encountered INFJs that if, if when they're in the mood to just speak in metaphors, 
like even for fun or because they are among other INFJs and they want to do that. Sometimes I can actually speak pretty fast, but that's because metaphor is what comes to them most naturally. Part of the reason why we are relatively slow speakers or leisurely speakers is because we constantly have to remain aware of the fact that our audience or our interlocutors are people that are not going to want to hear just a series of metaphors, right? They're going to want to hear um, relatively transparent discourse that they can easily hold on to. And so we constantly almost in a sense have to translate what comes to our minds. We, there's, a, there's this intermediate step between what's in our minds, what's, in our, what's going to come out of our mouth, and that intermediate step takes time. It takes time because there's additional processing involved and then significantly involves NI. It also involves FE and TI to a degree, but NI is the primary function involved here. And, um, and that does lead, in fact, to INFJs usually being leisurely speakers. And yes, it is often a giveaway that someone is an INFJ, particularly if you're hesitating between, you know, maybe a, two or three different types for somebody. That's usually where it becomes relevant because being like a leisurely speaker or someone who speaks not very quickly, usually by itself, it's not determined enough that it can help you make a considered choice. If you have prior context and you're hesitating, you're saying, okay, maybe this person's an INFJ, maybe this person is an ENFJ. So you're hesitating between ENFJ and INFJ. That becomes very relevant because ENFJs speak much faster. If you're hesitating between INFJ and INTP, which can happen sometimes, you know, like you, you notice the person's an FE user, maybe the FE is not very noticeable, but you're like, oh, is, it, is this person an INTP or an INFJ? In fact, that also will be relevant. It's not necessarily the case that INTPs are very fast thinkers, though because they tend to have well-developed NE, they tend to associate quickly. And unlike INFJs, the association, because it's, a, it's an external, it's an extroverted perception function, it doesn't really need a mediation. You know, it's, all, it's latching onto the external world. It's making funny associations, but between items in the external world, so people can understand what they're saying. They might find the associations kind of funny and original or whatever, but there won't need to be this extra translation that NI requires, NE does not require, because NE is already a function latching onto the ex external world, okay? They're both intuition functions, but one is latching onto the external world, the other is not, and requires extra translation, more time to articulate. What you'll notice with INTPs as well is that to the extent that they're not as sort of fluid and hyper-articulate speakers as, say, INFJs or, or ENFJs, pardon me, or ENTPs, because these types often are, the way in which the INTP is not as fast is not is quite different from the INFJs. The, with the INFJ, you get the sense that just they're unrolling something that they have formed in their head, right? So it just comes out. It comes out at a leisurely pace, but there's a holism to what's being expressed. Whereas with the INTP, there's a kind of stop-start kind of uh, quality. It also has to do with it has to do with TI and it has to do with NE has to do with TI because TI is constantly trying to systematize information and, and organize it into strings that are to the INTP's liking in terms of logic and coherence, but might come across to an external observer as a, a constant fine tuning as, as one is speaking that leads to sort of a, a certain staccato ex experience, but it's also linked with the INTP's way of, you know, and you see that more with the ENTP, but more seamlessly is the is the lateral thinking that comes, or the lateral expression as well as thinking that comes with, with having strong NE developed. So you get these two uh, functions that work together to produce a mode of articulation that is also going to have a certain speed that may not be as fast and fluent as it might be with an ENTP or an ENFJ, but instead of being this kind of big whole block that then has to be articulated as, you know, at a leisurely pace, that's the INFJ style, the INTP is much more stop-start and kind of goes around direction, comes back, structures, organizes, goes another direction, restructures. And INFJ doesn't do that. Usually it just, it's all formed, but it needs its time to come out. And that takes time. It's true. So ultimately it is simply true that uh, because of the particular minds they possess because of our, of, of our set of cognitive functions, 
INFJs tend to be more leisurely in articulation, in expression, but that's not something that is ought to be perceived as a weakness, because in a sense, if an INFJ was desperate to become hyper-articulate, like an ENFJ usually, or ENTP, in a sense, they'd be denying their nature, and they would be repressing what's original about their thinking. So it's almost of the essence and necessary for an INFJ to have this leisurely quality to the way they articulate. Um, it's true that, of course, there are variations. INFJs sometimes, those who have highly developed extroverted judgments, FE, for instance, maybe those that have more developed than, than uh, average uh, SE, you know, those INFJs exist. Maybe they will tend to have a, a fluency or articulation that comes out faster, but it's always going to be within the confines of the INFJ mind identity, you know, and that's fine. That's just how INFJs are. And it is indeed often a way to single the knives. But let me know if you have experienced that in relation to INFJs uh, yourself. If you yourself are an INFJ, how would you uh, describe your articulation? Are you quick? Are you leisurely? Where do you stand? Let me know because I, I kind of want this conversation to continue. All right. See you guys soon. I'll see you on Wednesday.